Hello everybody, how are you going? Welcome to staying in North America's most famous mountain hotel. Something that sounds a little bit ambiguous, but then when you see this kind of imagery here, it looks like it has to be CGI or animation or something out of a cartoon. I don't know what it would be, but honestly, it just looks so picturesque and I'm sure it charges quite a premium price, but hopefully it lives up to that. Fairmount is an interesting brand, and one you don't really hear much about. Despite them being a Canadian company, they have hotels all around the world, with the majority of them being historic structures. One of them is okay. the Fairmount Banff Springs, located within the stunning Banff National Park in Alberta, Canada. It's a well-respected property with a ton of history, and a pretty iconic structure in the Canadian Rockies. Yeah. So today, I'm flying out to see what it's like. We're checking in for one night in Fairmount's prestigious gold category, getting the highest level of service with some of the highest prices to accompany it. So far, from everything that I'm seeing, it certainly does look like some five, six star kind of thing. I don't even know what it would really be like, but just from the food that I guess is going to be buffet, but just still that view and you can just see the heritage articles about it as well. But man, it is just, I can't get over the fact that surely it has to be animated or something like just how it's perfectly placed and hopefully it goes over a bit more of the history of it because how old is this thing how many rooms does it have it looks like some castle I, I can only presume or I don't even know what it would be but just those massive snow peaks is I think just adds to its beauty and it's a massive building from everything I can see but just the way that it's dwarfed and beautifully dwarfed by the mountains surrounding it like it's not built on top of a hillside to try and capitalize on that it's it's somewhat I don't know, just this massive monolith within the monoliths of the world. So I've had a pretty rocky relationship with Fairmount in the rocky? past. My most recent stay at one was in 2018 at the Chateau okay. Laurier in Ottawa. I paid somewhere in the high $300 range for a standard room that charged you extra to use the in-room refrigerator, <laughs> made me miss my flight from their valet service taking much longer than expected, oh and charged an offensive $9 for an Esca bottle of water. So you can say that Fairmount hasn't exactly been my top choice for stays since. With that said, I've always known about the Fairmount what? Banff Springs and the Lake Louise hotels. They're Ooh, okay. stunning properties with over a hundred years of rich history. Man. They're also located in Banff, one of the most breathtaking national parks in North America. My good friend and producer John has been harassing me over the past three years to go check it out. So I finally caved and booked a flight to do just that. Oh. The Fairmount Banff Springs is about an hour and a half away from Calgary's International Airport. Right, well th that actually seems fairly accessible. Let me just come back to the map really quickly. I just want to see, it's just kind of driving up there and I guess that is perfect in a way. It's still an hour and a half, it's not, well maybe you probably could get helicopters in, but I guess he didn't do that exactly. That's definitely going to be an option though for some people, surely. They wouldn't dare just have to drive an hour and a half. God, that takes way too long. And I guess also to be fair, if I did have the money, I would absolutely be booking that helicopter ride over, like you said, one of the most scenic, picturesque, just beautiful places. I mean, actually, I don't know how high they are. Would the helicopter even be able to go? Would it have to fly through the canyons because of how thin the air would be? I don't know how high this area of Banff truly is. But again, just looking at that, just surrounded on all areas by these hillsides that I guess cater towards a whole bundle of skiing. I don't know if there's skiing right at the front door. It would make sense that there is, but then I'm not seeing kind of the rest of the town that generally comes with skiing. I, I might be completely wrong, but that's just, I don't see a massive slope carved into that hillside right there. And the reverse angle, I don't think showed one either. Yeah, even just looking at this, it's not like I can see any there and maybe they're too steep. I don't know what is too steep for general punters to be going down, but still just to be building this thing even in that kind of area, man. It's just such an impressive building and I'm sure it's just insulated and the kind of thermal management of a place like this, crazy. Especially because of the renovations that they would have had to undergo over the years. But oh, it just seems worth it. As much as he was saying the water well, was expensive and the valet service wasn't fantastic. And I mean, he didn't pay too much. Like, I don't know if Australian prices are just skewing my perspective of the entire thing. But $300 a night for a generic room of any sort? That's pretty 
normal or pretty alright by my standards of everything I can ever think of. The Fairmount Fam Springs is about an hour and a half away from Calgary's International Airport. Although it doesn't feel like it, as once you reach the mountains, the drive gets a lot more pretty. It yeah. continues to do so once you enter the actual town of Banff, nice. and ultimately arrive at the Fairmount, which is a stunning and massive Scottish-inspired castle. It was built in 1888, and is essentially built upon the confluence of two rivers. It was originally oh. built by Canadian Pacific Railway, as a structure looking rather different than how it does today. That's oh. because in 19 1926, the majority of the original structure had burned down, wow. and the present tower was built in the years following. The Banff oh. Springs Hotel, as it was originally called, hosted many dignitaries from King George VI to Queen Elizabeth and a few Canadian Prime Ministers. Wow. It was ultimately designated as a National Historic Site, as well as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Can I what? Whoa, 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 whoa. That is pretty outrageous. I mean, yes, I was blown away by its beauty, but to be achieving that level of kind of... I guess worldwide influence to the degree where they're actually being a recognized site, that is pretty darn impressive, especially considering you're not actually the original. This guy right here is the original, and to be fair, it doesn't actually look that dissimilar in terms of the general aspect. This big coal stack, maybe that's the brick building? I don't know what that would be, maybe it's just a furnace for the entire thing, but you can certainly see the similarities. They definitely just didn't make an entirely different building, modernize it for the time or anything like that. I mean, even the fact that they went for a Scottish-inspired building, I don't know where and how that would have been, even if it was Irish or, of course, English, but to be Scottish? That's very, very unique in terms of I've never really heard of anything like that before, and so this has had quite the roller coaster of history i can only imagine oh but hang on i have just noticed that every single person in the foreground here maybe this is for the opening and they're celebrating it but i don't know why is there such a scottish heritage and presence here Canadian Pacific Railway's hotel division was actually still hotel acting division. as the owner up until 1999, when they had purchased wow. the controlling shares in the Fairmount brand, to which they had decided to rebrand this property as a Fairmount. Oh, Today gosh. we booked a standard one king bed Fairmount gold room. I'll talk more about the Fair pricing enough. at the end of the video, but from what I've seen online prior to our visit, I really wasn't expecting much, and certainly not an ultra-luxurious room. However, to my genuine surprise, Fairmount has really stepped up their product. This is due to a $30 million renovation to the main tower in 2021, which has spruced up all of the guest accommodations as well as a few public spaces. Wow. This was desperately needed as the former rooms were simply nowhere near what Fairmount was charging for them. Oh, I mean, it makes sense that things have to go through this massive long cycle as they, I mean, I guess they probably could to some extent be able to afford to upgrade some of the rooms every single year, but that's just never going to happen. The economy of scale just to be able to do one big renovation all at once so you're not disturbing patrons throughout all the different days hammering drilling everything like that it makes sense and so i'd love to know what did this room like if you could just go and show me what the old room looked like that'd be really interesting because you can see that it still has that more classical feel to it it's not ultra modern white square set ceilings that still got all that trim not crazy decorative but just those trims and even the furniture choices you know where you are and it's nice it's nice that i mean i guess it would work if they did decide to contrast the externals with the internals and i'm sure some of the other historical building sites apparently because most of them are would go down that more ultra modern route but just for the area that it's in it feels nice to almost just keep it i, I mean it's clean and it's modern but it's not, it's traditional modern. I don't know if that's a thing, but that's what this feels like. But things have changed for the better, and our standard gold room was exceptional. While nice. it's on the small side, likely due to the age of the structure, this room was exactly what should be expected for an accommodation at this price point. It has okay. beautiful and tasteful touches of luxury, tons of ports, including USB-C, as well as a stocked coffee bar, and a free-to-use fridge. Oh my whoa, god, they did whoa. it. This guy just needs to calm down. You can't be expecting to be using a fridge. I mean, are you crazy? I mean, the aircon, that's apparently going to be free. Well, hopefully it is, or I guess the heating, whatever you want to be calling it, that's included. But the fridge, which uses a fraction of the power that that would, nah, you got to pay for that. That's the kind of weird things that I guess hotels do, just to be trying to grab and pinch and take every little margin that they can, which is all the business of the entire thing. That's why they, uh, what, uh, I guess were they charging him for opening the fridge? Like, how do they know if you open the fridge? Or how do they know if you're using the fridge? Hopefully they weren't just charging it if you just opened it at all, because, oh man, a lot of toddlers have cost a lot of money, or made a lot of money for Fairmont in that case, and maybe that's why they do it. But for something like this, it just for him to be stepping up the game, or 
I guess for them to be stepping up their games really does at least set the scene for what level of service and inclusions and anything. I mean, it's a fridge for goodness sake, but he did get the gold service and I don't know if it's bronze, silver, gold, platinum, titanium, I don't know. Hopefully he'll go through them and hopefully there's a decent price jump as the actual things go up, as the actual services go up, but for gold, it seems fair enough. The bathroom is also pretty small, but aesthetically is Come very on. modern with good finishes. Yeah. Not the best I've ever seen in a luxury hotel, but totally acceptable. The okay. only annoyance was the bathroom door, which is a sliding door that doesn't exactly close all the way. Now, right. the other rooms at the hotel range from similarly sized standard rooms with slightly downgraded decor to one bedroom corner suites to the massive tower suites located at the very top of the structure inside the peaks. But honestly, our small room was near perfect for one reason reason alone, and that's the astonishing view. Looking south down the mountain range was absolutely incredible to wake up to. Now oh, oh, just let me relive that again. Look at that thing. I mean, it looks incredible on camera, and so you can only imagine just the vividness or the, the beauty that you're seeing. There's not too many places in the world where you're going to be having this level of comfort, quality, service, everything like that. With a view like that, like the, the I can't, I don't know, maybe in Switzerland, in Europe, probably, but realistically, there just still isn't going to be that many places in the world where you can get something like this. It's just crazy, and for him to be saying, well, the little room was perfect, and I guess if you did go to the big rooms at the top, then you're probably going to be having maybe what 180 degrees up to 360 degrees suites so then you can have whatever view you want just at the price of an arm and a leg and i mean to be fair these kind of hotels have to be offering just those major major price step ups as there's some people that can afford that there's some people they walk in the door at the building and they earn that much money what what i don't know what is it, 100 grand a night 10 grand a night whatever it may be they go yeah no worries, I'll pay that. And so you need to be having the $300 rooms that are beautiful and very well done. And, you know, even talking about the bathroom, the bathroom's in fine. Sure, it might not be the best ever, but I don't know about you, but anyone that I know would certainly take a bathroom like that. Now, the gold accommodations at this hotel occupy the entire fourth and fifth floor of the main okay. tower. But Fair what enough. do you get with gold other than just a nicer room? <laughs> well, on the chocolate. fifth floor, there's a private concierge just for you to answer all of your questions and fulfill any bookings. Fair Further enough. on are two lounges, the first being a quiet one to read, and the other where you'll find the buffet. Hang on a second, you have an entire buffet on the floor that you're at? You don't even have to go down to a particular place? This is at an entirely different level that I've ever even known. Like, I don't even know what's going on, let alone just having a concierge to take your bookings. Like, what kind of bookings are you doing? Open during the day and into the night, serving breakfast and evening hors d'oeuvres. You can also find some premium drink offerings from teas, coffee, a build-your-own-hot-chocolate, fresh juices, and even smoothies. This Crazy. was already a really solid and luxurious offering, but the spreads they put out for breakfast and dinner were genuinely fantastic. Breakfast featured a ton of options from delicious smoked salmon to a huge selection of hot items. What's I'm pretty sure the on? evening hors d'oeuvres were not meant to be eaten as a full dinner, but the amount of genuinely delicious selections they had literally turned into one for us. What is going on here? As, is this something you pay for or is this included? As it doesn't seem like he said anything like, oh, it costs X amount a night. Is that just part of gold? Like, you just, you just get it? Because that's crazy. Like that's that's so much food in terms of the variety that they are having on offer. I mean, I guess he said it was a buffet, so it makes sense. But just all the different smoked stuff, all the different chips and bread, and you can even have your pine cones if you want. I don't even know what half of these things are. Are they? I don't know. They're, they're deep fried somethings, but there's too many things for me to know. Is that pork rind bits? God, there is everything here. Eggs, just man. This is a lot of food and a lot to take in, but it looks really, really good. And so if this is what you're getting for, what, 300 US Canadian? I don't know. I don't know. He didn't exactly say, I don't believe. But for around, let's say, 300 US, because that's the worst case of the two, for 300 US, 300 US would I take it? I don't know. It feels all right, but I don't know what the... Novotel in Sydney does, and I don't know how it compares star-wise or anything. They had great options from pasta and meatballs <laughs> to a full going. charcuterie spread to polenta Go. fries and spinach dip. It was all polenta by far pasta. the best lounge food I have ever had. Honestly, it was some of the best buffet food I've ever had, and it wow. really made this something to remember. Unfortunately though, alcoholic drinks were an extra charge, which I would have expected to be complimentary given the price point. I, I don't know. I, I would have thought that the entire buffet would have been 
priced whatever he said. Not in complimentary, considering that that was a lot of food out. It's not like they just have general stuff out. Like, that seemed to be a lot of different things. And then you also have meals as well or how does that work like do they have a restaurant that then you go separately and then that's paid for there was just so many complexities to a hotel of this scale that i'm just not aware of but if you are willing to pay for drinks and looking for a wider selection the newly renovated rundle bar provides a very Look luxurious space to enjoy a wide selection of pricey drinks but the views are great and it even has a secret speakeasy style entrance to a quiet seating area nice. elsewhere is the ramsey house with a nice lounge below as well as the walt house pub both featuring pool tables as for dining well the fairmount has a few selections other than the pub food at walt house there's castello italiana the vermilion room and 1888 chop house oh, they all Okay, there's just infinite food apparently, and I don't know where it'll all come from. I guess it's just trucked in from all over the world, which just the logistics of that for a hotel of this scale just to be dealing with all the different options. Like, it's not like a general restaurant where you go, okay, you add an Italian restaurant, so they've got this many pastas, this many pizzas, and that's all the ingredients. They don't need to be having everything that I've ever thought of on the menu and just available 24 7. I mean, I guess. That's what a hotel like this is, but I, it seems like for $300, this is a pretty good price to performance. When he was going, oh, I don't know, I've had some bad experiences before, this seems pretty darn good, even just like the little things. Like, it's clearly highly renovated, but they spent $30 million, he said, only on the middle tower. Okay, but then how much have they spent everywhere else? Because even just things like this, it's cool. Like, people like this kind of stuff. Then all the lounges and just options for just hanging out and having your own space to read even. Like, those kind of things. That's that's very, very premium. All of which are very expensive. Like, okay. an eight-ounce filet mignon at the Chop House is $70. And while some of these restaurants are very beautifully designed, like the Vermilion Room, I'm not sure if a $70 steak in here is all that worth it. Even the quick service option down at the lobby, while nice and looks like it has tasty food, was very expensive. Like, these very simple sandwiches were $16, $17, and like $20. Okay, that is expensive, but to be fair, I wouldn't have been surprised if there were $4,000. Like, I just do not know what this kind of thing is, because like I said, you've got to be bringing everything in, and it's so far away. Like, uh, you're air freighting it to Calgary at best, and then at worst, you're trucking it across the country from shipping. It's all those kind of things are coming into it. And realistically, like you said, from $15 to $20, let's say, there are some sandwiches you can find in the Sydney CBD that are basically that price. I mean, but let's say $12 for a sandwich like this. You're going to be paying for it. Now, with that said, the reviews for <laughs> all that? of the dining have, for the most part, been overwhelmingly positive. But when you're not exactly. at the bars and the restaurants, there's plenty to do elsewhere. The resort offers basically every experience you can think of in Banff from helicopter okay. rides to private group tours yeah, and so much more. The yeah. summer activities list is even more extensive, with horseback riding, fishing, whitewater rafting, ATV tours, and a ton of other stuff. But pretty much all of those are at an extra charge, and with some of like the helicopter that. ride and private tours costing hundreds of dollars just for the experience. That's really neat and all, but what I care about is what's free. I mean, sure, but it's also the fact that, of course, the helicopter ride isn't included. I mean, maybe if you stay in the top lounge, it would be, but then they go, well, you're paying for that, so you can clearly afford to pay a couple of hundred dollars just to be going on the helicopter, and then the tours and everything else like that. Like, it's... I don't know anywhere that that's going to be free. Am I crazy? Is, is that just not a thing? That they never are going to be free? Or they should be free? But then what is free? Besides just taking two legs and walking up the mountain and doing all those kind of things, I wouldn't expect anything to be free. These are clearly businesses that are very particularly placed for what they can offer. They can offer these kind of services in the middle of otherwise nowhere. That's what you're paying for. Incredible views and incredible service, which is kind of an impossible task, but they make it happen. Or, well, included with your daily resort fee. Surprisingly, yeah. there's a decent amount. Regardless okay. of what type of room you get at the hotel, your resort fee covers some equipment rentals, access to the indoor and outdoor pool along with okay. fitness center, as well as a free pass for local transportation, giving you cool. free transportation to the local highlights, including the White Museum, which you also get a complimentary pass to. The hotel also hosted a few daily activities like guided nature and history tours and wine tastings. Some require registration and others do require payment, such as the campfire rentals, which is a shame. But I was surprised to hear that the wine and cheese tasting is in fact complimentary, which is a nice perk. Wow, how do they do this? Like, how do they, I guess they're banking on people not using it. So they go, 
we know that not every single person or we know that every single person is not going to be able to use every single thing that we offer if we offer it all as complimentary and then there's extras on top of that so we can just afford to be doing the cheese and everything else like that because we might have 10 people out of the thousand that stay here this night just come and that's fine, we factor it into our prices. But again, for $300 a night for the guided tours and the equipment hire, like are you talking ski hire or are you just talking the bikes hire? I don't know. This sounds like it's just getting better and better and better, especially like I said, for the area that they are in. They're not in a city. You're going there for the experience of being in the area that you're in. And then you happen to be getting all of this stuff for 300 bucks a night. Like I would expect something like this to be costing more like six hundred dollars a night or nine hundred dollars a night maybe not for the his room but like six hundred bucks five hundred bucks a night or six hundred bucks a night for his room maybe i'm thinking australian but even just us if you're thinking upwards towards a grand for everything that he's described so far i'd go okay i guess that makes sense but when you do leave the property, there is still so much to do. The Fairmount is in very close proximity to Bow Falls, which is a short hike down the hill. For a much longer 1.5 kilometer hike, you can walk to the Sulphur Mountain, where you can either bathe in the hot spring at the base, or climb the mountain by foot or gondola. For a short drive away, you can find the Cave and Basin Historical Site, or the close by Mount Norquay for skiing. So obviously there's a lot to do on property, but even more, especially off property. And I guess that's where the value property proposition comes into play here. I just need to see this time lapse again because if that is real and I surely hope it is, I mean it looks like it should be, but honestly everything to me just looks like it's fake. It just looks too perfect. Just the way that all the snow falls on the trees and the mountains and the building just blends in a very monolithic way into the rest of the mountain. It's just crazy but then just to be having this beautiful rolling sunset oh man you can see why and this is what i mean there is so much on offer in these areas it's just exactly what it's designed for and summer in winter it's not like eh, it's two grand a night in winter because of the ski season and it's five bucks a night that we pay you actually just to come in summer like no you've got everything all year round just these views of Banff is just incredible and i guess that's where the value proposition comes into play here as i'm sure you've guessed staying at the fairmount Banff springs isn't cheap our standard gold room for one night was $835 Canadian, which is about $620 oh. USD. While that does include all taxes and resort fees, right. if you bring a vehicle like we did, it will also be an extra $32 for self-parking or okay. $46 for valet. Now, the resort doesn't that really have a base sense, rate, though. as they go off a of variable pricing structure, which is constantly fluctuating. But from what I understand, the cheapest time to visit is when we did, over the winter. It's when the property tries to fill vacancy with the convention crowd, while the summer is more primarily focused towards tours. Why would winter be less? That doesn't make any sense to me. I would have thought the winter would have been way more. Well, I mean, people do go out and enjoy the summer, just the hiking and everything, but for winter to be less? That doesn't make any sense. Of which I guess I should just finally come back and actually look at this invoice here or this receipt, as that then makes so much more sense. As I was going, this just seems like a steal. How is it only $300? I, I, unless I misheard or something, but I swear he said $300. Maybe was it seven? No, room charge, seven. How did he say? Anyway, that's why I was going, I, I thought it was 300 and it didn't make any sense. Like to be offering all of that, but no, for $881 Canadian, that makes more sense. That's more in line of what I would understand and valet parking, sure. That's another 46 bucks, room GST, Alberta tourism levy, okay. Tourism improvement fee, okay, that's a lot going on. Resort experience fee, $50. That seems fairly normal, but room charge of $700. Now the world makes sense again. As I was just losing my mind going, how is not everyone there all the time for 300 bucks a night and maybe let's say 400 bucks a night by the time you have a couple of extra things on there. That makes a, a great score, but no, for double, I can understand. I'm not on Mars with the pricing. For just a standard regular room, the cheapest rate I could find is in April at around $450 Canadian, which okay. is a fairly reasonable $330 USD. Yeah. But that is rock bottom, literally the yeah. cheapest day for the entire year. And over the summer, you're not spending anything less than $1,200 a night just for a standard wow. room. 
If you want to upgrade to gold, then you're pushing $1,600 a night. Even with the updated decor, rich history, and excellent service, I really don't know if you could ever justify that price. But I guess it all comes down to what you care about most. If you want to experience the actual location of Banff and see all of the sights, or if you're into skiing and don't care all that much about the most luxurious place to rest your head, then there are a lot of other choices in the area. Uh, yeah, but then is that really while you're there? Like if this place, if this hotel, this resort is even on your radar, like you're going, yeah, I'm looking at this one, maybe this one, if it's any what popping up on your radar, yes, the three or well, the $450 a night Canadian does exist for that one night a year. But you're in a certain level where you're going, this is where I want to stay. I've stayed here every year, every five years, whatever it may be for the last 50 decades, whatever it may be, like generationally, we've been coming here since it was built, since it was just owned by the railway, and I just love it every single time. And if you do love the nostalgia, and some people are super brand loyal, and I guess then if you are building up membership reward points that I can only presume that they would have, maybe it helps out. And yes, it was very, very expensive from what originally I had in my head being 300 to now up to 1500, 1300 AUD, all of those kind of things. It makes a big, big difference. But like I said, it's more in line with what I would have expected it to be instead of just blowing my mind. So now more than ever, I'm just so interested to see what are these Tower Spire prices going to be? Because it could be, if that's 1200 bucks a night, what, like six grand a night, 10 grand a night? I, I really don't know. And of course, there were going to be, I guess, so many like, kind of almost secretive extras. The extras that aren't even really on the board, on the books or anything like that, that they could provide to you to a certain extent, but you will pay for it. But if you're up there, you can afford to pay for it. Some, like the Moose Hotel and the Mount Royal Hotel, are arguably in better locations and at their highest rates over the summer are pretty much the lowest rates at the Fairmount over the winter. It's also <laughs> worth noting that the hotel does run several discounted rates throughout the year and is also a part of the Accor Hotel Alliance. Now, Accor oh, Hotel Accor Alliance Accor. is kind of useless to North Americans since the majority of their hotels are overseas. But right. that does mean there are a few ways to book this on points and just right. generally find other ways to save. But that's a whole nother rabbit hole, so look into it if it interests you. Yeah, and of course there are so many different things you can do, but it, it just comes back to the fact that if this is what you want, this picture right here, which I guess if you're flying in on your helicopter you could maybe get, otherwise you will never be able to get it, but if that's the kind of environment that you want to be in, not down in the town with the rest of the peasants, no, you want to be on the what eighth floor something like that if you can afford it and that's where you want to go and you want to be just surrounded by it it makes sense this is why there are multiple hotels so that people can have their options and they can have what they want they can spend their money exactly how they want to for these kind of experiences but really even if you don't stay here just drop by for a visit to see the castle and walk the ground you can still experience the property without spending a night. In the end, True. I was really pleasantly surprised by the Fairmount Banff. I went into it not with the greatest perception, but was absolutely blown away by the quality of service and how astonishingly beautiful it all was. Yeah. From what I've seen too, the summer looks even more stunning and vibrant, and yeah, really, right. that's what you're paying for. This is exactly. a Canadian icon, it's one of the most famous hotels in Canada and even North America. It's also yeah. one of the most breathtaking, from the incredible architecture to the endless mountain vistas that make you feel like you're in a matte painting. It's incredible everywhere you look. And you know what? I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt that maintaining a property like this is a costly endeavor and as a result oh. requires the high rates. Oh man, I I hadn't even thought about that or I didn't really want to think about that part, but like even just being a heritage site and also having to perform renovations, those kind of renovation costs are just astronomical because there's so many extra hoops you need to be jumping through just to be going, I just want to read your proper wall, or I just want to remove the wallpaper, or I just want to do this, and no, it's heritage, and so you have to be going through all of it. And I guess the money ends up talking, and that's what people are paying for. You are paying to have a certain level of experience, and for that, that's why I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt with the pricing. Yes, he says, I don't know if you could ever justify it, but there are plenty of people that can justify it. That's the reason it entirely exists, and that's why they need to keep a certain level of standard. And at least from all accounts here, it doesn't seem like he's ever felt ripped off. Like, he does feel as though it's expensive, but he does feel like, well, I'm paying a grand a night, but I'm also not getting really anything in return. Like, I had to do this and do that. The door wasn't even open when I arrived. That kind of thing would really put a sour taste in your mouth, especially after his last experience. So to go from his last experience and then, I guess, come in with fairly low expectations, but then to be pleasantly surprised, it sounds like that's what exactly they're going for. Because 
if someone did go, you know what, I'm going to stay four nights at the Moose and two nights here or one night here just to be having that bit of an extra. And or even like I said, just not even stay, but just come and enjoy their facilities. Like just to be coming around as maybe eventually you might just get a couple of customers just because they go, you know what? I really like that restaurant. I really want to stay there, but I just can't afford it. But now I can. Fairmount Gold is a step above it all. It was exactly what it needed to be. And while I never think club level is fully worth the premium, I do see a lot of value in it. If you can snag it at a decent price and maybe make it a special occasion or something, I think you'll be totally satisfied. Nice. And I think it's genuinely hilarious that this was $465 cheaper than Disney's Contemporary's club level room. Go watch that video if you haven't already. What so let's that? give this an actual rated review. I'll rate the Fairmount out of 5 categories for a potential perfect score oh. of 50 out of 50. I mean, surely, I mean, he said that there was arguably better in other locations, but then at the same time, can you wake up and just look straight down the valley? I don't know. I feel like it, for me, it would be an 11 out of 10. Amenities, sure. Everything that he seems to say, I don't know what the kind of perspective is, but just it seems like it's at, at least an 8 out of 10 in every category. Or maybe not value, maybe like a 7 out of 10. But even then, just come on. Let's Starting see what it's location, got. location, you are situated in an insanely beautiful valley with some oh, very yeah. close by attractions. With the yeah. free bus fare, you're pretty much connected to everything True. you need to be in the area, and that gives it a perfect score of 10 out of of 10. There Amenities are also really solid. You have a few options of ultra fine dining along with a spa, pool facilities, a bowling alley, tons <laughs> of shops, and even a convenience store, business center, adventure desk, and winter gear facility. In the building or just around? Like I knew that there was a couple of buildings around and I guess or well, maybe in the glass I can kind of see that there's a bit of a distance but man all to be serviced by basically that one hotel or is there other little restaurants and hotels is a bit of a hub as well surrounding the building i mean i wouldn't be surprised as there's only so many options that one building can offer but it seems like they offer a lot and so what's it going to be there's certainly a lot but i do wish a few more experiences <sighs> were complimentary so okay, i'll give it a nine out of ten see? luxury That's and quality good. is also pretty good our room, while small, was very well appointed. There were some areas of the property that didn't necessarily live up to other luxury brands like the Four Seasons, and there are some parts that feel a bit dated and not at the caliber of what you're paying. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Wow, Service okay. was phenomenal though. Everyone was super kind and happy, no one made me feel like I was out of place, and all the staff genuinely went above and beyond. I have never had this type of service at any other luxury hotel I've stayed at, and I mean it when I say the staff at the Fairmount were some of the most warm and friendly people I have ever met. That's what makes and breaks a brand, isn't it? Just the staff, and you can see why they try to invest so heavily in their staff, and they really do hope that their staff at least can pretend to love their job or whatever it needs just to be coming across as being just patrons and servants to whatever people need from the chefs and the waitresses and the doorman and the concierge and everything like that just to try and make people's entire experience because someone can sleep well but they're not going to remember sleeping well like they're going to ah, the the bed was all right, but they're going to remember the clerk when they first walked in who didn't even open the door and didn't even know where they went and just was on the phone and just told them to shoo them away and told them to come back later. That is what they're going to remember. And so to be having the best experience of any staff, and it seems like he's very well versed in the world of travel and high fine dining hotels and everything like that, that's a hell of a compliment. I wouldn't ask any more from them, oh. so it's a 10 out of 10. Value, go. however, is really the most subjective category. Ooh. Prices are a bit steep, and even after the renovation, I don't think the rates past $900 a night are worth it. Fairmount Gold was a fun experience, and I maybe would do it again for a special occasion sometime over the winter, but I'm not sure if I could ever justify paying over $1,000 a night for a standard room. It's That's a 5 out of 10 giving the Fairmount Bam Springs a very respectable score of 41 out of 50. And especially then considering that, like you said, value is going to be subjective, you can almost remove that category and it gets what, like a 37 out of 40, or whatever it may be, even a 38, what was it? I, whatever it was, it was very, very high in the 40s. And that shows you then clearly what it's at because value, someone that is on 100 grand a day, 
doesn't care about paying a thousand dollars a night five thousand dollars a night whatever that's value for them the value is such a skewed objective and it's good to be having in here especially if you do have so many different perspectives from all around the world as at least then you can give the more common man a better understanding about if they were to spend some money there what they might be getting for their money but then again when you're talking this kind of level are you really even talking about those people anymore like if someone is really wanting the value i mean people do want value but it, I feel like people are willing to spend more and they try and put the money out of their mind when they're staying in a place like this. So honestly, as someone who just hopefully one day will get to visit Banff and just take in this kind of extreme nature, whether it's summer or winter and snowy winter wonderland or just the peak of the season, whatever it may be, even though it has a 41 out of 50 score, it seems like if someone can afford it, it is value for money. And if you can't afford it, then it's not value for money at all. Like it seems like there is a big jump. And I guess, like I said, that is where these hotels lie. They are for those extra experiences in the same way that someone might go, I'll stay at the Moose, but then I want the helicopter ride. If they can have it all, you go here. And if that's what you want, there isn't really any other options. Just to be seeing down these canyons, seeing everything, all the restaurants, you really make the entire holiday an entire experience instead of just going okay back to bed like if that's what it is and people do get tired and they do love to just extend out their days it makes sense just go sleep on the cheapest thing you possibly can to get a good night's sleep but this it's something special and so if i could afford it i don't know i would certainly consider it